Hello, in this video I would like to show you how to turn a Windows service on or off or change its properties. So to begin, let's click on the start button and we'll type in the word services. That should bring up the services app option. Go ahead and click on that and then we'll get this list of services. So we start with the name, we have a description. If you want to read more of the description, you can drag the line between description and status to the left or right by clicking and dragging with your mouse. Um, but we also see the status and the startup type for the service as well as uh, how the service logs on, under which uh, account as it were. So uh, let's check out, for example, background intelligent transfer service. So it's not currently running, right? So we could turn that on by right clicking and clicking on start. Now we can see the status is running. Okay, we can also right click and stop it. And we can change its properties. So if we right click and go down to properties, we can see, for example, the startup type. If you'd like uh, a service to start up on its own whenever you turn on your computer, uh, either choose from this drop down list automatic, which will start it up uh, as quickly as possible, or automatic delayed start, which will delay the starting of the service uh, for a while, giving other services that it may depend on uh, a chance to. Uh, come into play. You can also switch it to manual or you can disable the service altogether. Some services uh, will not remain disabled. Um, an, an example of that would be the Windows 10 update service. Uh, Microsoft is pretty aggressive about making sure that updates get into your machine and you'll find that th that particular service will re-enable itself on its own. And we also have, uh, under the Properties tab, the ability to start, stop, pause, or resume the service. And we have the logon option here. The default is the local system account. Uh, you can check to allow the service to interact with the desktop, or you can specify a particular account uh, if you find that the service needs to run under a different one. Generally, uh, local system account will be more than sufficient. There are recovery options. So uh, if your service is failing for some reason, uh, you have different options here, such as take no action. The default on this service is to restart the service. And otherwise, you can run a specific program or restart the computer. Um, in, in the case of running a program, uh, you may want to run a program that alerts you if you're a remote administrator uh, that the service is not running and therefore allow you to take action. And you have the same options on the second failure and on subsequent failures. Right. So uh, just a warning here, if on subsequent failures you choose restart the service as opposed to you know take no action or one of the others, uh, you could get yourself into a loop where if the service is continuously going to have issues starting, uh, it will nevertheless keep trying to start, uh, which of course can affect the performance and stability of your system as a whole. Right? We have the ability to reset uh, the fail counts after so many days or restart the service after so many minutes. And you can also browse dependencies. So you can see what services your service depends on, the, the current service depends on, uh, which can also help you troubleshoot uh, the service and or, or the service queue, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the, the whole system of what's going on in the background, uh, maybe it's another service that's failing, that's making your service, uh, of the concerned service, fail as well. And whenever you've changed anything 
in this area, just click OK to apply it and close the window. Hopefully this has helped you start, stop, or manage a Windows service. Thanks for watching.